Uh, welcome aboard. I'm Captain Jake, and we're back with another episode of Field of Glory Kingdoms. We are playing uh, the tutorials in a slow manner so that everyone can see how it's played, and I can learn how it's played also, obviously. I've, I've read all the rules, all 600 and some odd pages. I did not read the uh, version 1.0.1 update so uh we'll see how that affects also as noted by uh, one subscriber the music was too loud in the last episode which i didn't realize until after the recording was done so we've turned that down hopefully that will be at a much better level we've decided which level would be the best so, we are going to uh, load our previous game and continue from there. So, let's go ahead and load. And while that loads, I'm going to try to remember who this game is uh, developed by. Field of Glory was originally by Byzantine Games, but now it's by... Um, uh, shoot, I don't remember who it's by. Age Ode. It's A G E O D E with the developer, and it's published by Slytherin. So now that we've gotten that Age Ode, I guess that's the way O O D O D Age Ode. That's the way I'll pronounce it. We'll go from there. All right. So okay i had to race through the first part of this tutorial to get back to this point for some reason the tutorial wasn't opening correctly so now that we're back where we're supposed to be we will continue so we left off that we wanted to click on this unit q button middle in the upper left uh region panel so here we go Units and kingdoms are divided into three categories. Standing army units, which are generally powerful but expensive to raise. They gain experience normally and will cost you authority if you lose or disband them. Next are levies, which are inexpensive to recruit, but don't gain much experience and cost too much in upkeep to keep them when not in use. Lastly, there are mercenaries, Who's usually cost only gold, but quite a lot of it. Okay. Recruitment speed is influenced by the equipment production of the region or domain slash province. Nobles contribute significant to this if they are assigned to military tasks. Military buildings provide additional equipment to accelerate recruitment, although the general population doesn't contribute much in this regard. To review a unit, please left click on it or right click to add it to the queue. Add at least three units to the queue to continue. Okay, so to review a unit, left click on it. So we got early spearmen, which is defensive, early spearmen. Okay, attack and defense and hits. Range defense, okay. Okay, their attack is a little bit better. We have here. We have mercenary spearmen. Early crossbowmen. Like me some crossbowmen. Attack and defense is, not, uh, is good, but their ranged attack is good. Slingers, which we already know that we have some. So sergeants, attack and defense, mounted units, early knights and sergeants, and what do we have here? We just have knights and sergeants, okay. This does not say Money cost increases with each active unit of this type, plus 15%. Okay, it says 
add at least three units to the queue. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's add this one. This one. And some early crossbowmen. Okay. Remember that the question mark, which is located here, help button, can offer more in-depth information if you want to explore the game's details further. So we'll just click on it to see what we got. So there you go, recruitment panel. <laughs> Shows you everything you need to know. So that's part of that 300 and some pages worth of rules that I read. <laughs> Which I, uh, now it's been a number of weeks. I don't remember any of them. So there you go. Okay. Creating an effective army in kingdoms is a nuanced task requiring, requiring some planning as units vary in their effectiveness based on the terrain and scale of the battle. The lightning bolt, we'll call it combat power estimate on each unit card is just a rough guide okay there we go it doesn't capture all the nuances of the unit's abilities spearmen may be effective against cavalry charges in open ground but they struggle against even light woodsmen in forest settings okay we'll go into more detail about this during our first battle But let's uh, resume our military campaigns. Select and then move your army to Trundle, two regions northeast of Toledo, um, by doing a right click on the region proper so that we can confront the Hafa of Saragossa. Okay. So let's move northeast. So we want to. Move this to here. Uh, yeah. Tudela. Yep. The Tafa. Saragossa Tafa. Okay. It says by doing a right click on the region. Okay. Not sure why we're. Uh, we got no, no leader showing up here. Okay. Okay. Don't know why. Maybe I did not, when I raced through it, I did not give everything that I was supposed to pamper and move the penalty. Okay. What's this one? Cool. Tan body guard efficiency increased by. Points to recruiter, yeah. And Fernandez Law Administration Piety Zero. Now oh, let's do this guy. Okay. Now we want to move our army to here. So let's right click. Yes, we want to right click to here. Although game usually finds the shortest route to your destination automatically, you can do much more. For example, you can define an alternate path, instruct the game to avoid sea routes, set up a patrol or round trip, intercept an army, or merge with another one of your armies. These are advanced commands, so it's best to learn them at your own pace by checking the corresponding entries in the in-game help. For now, let's just cancel our movement by forming a right click on our current region of Toledo while our army is selected. Okay. Perfect. Now let's plot our move again by first right clicking on uh, whatever, then on that, 
again, you'll notice we are not taking the same path as before because we clicked on the intermediate region of Ruella. Uh, Let's see. Okay, there it is. Uh, before plotting our move to Fidela. Uh, Fidela. Given our army's movement speed of four, which is listed right there, um, and the presence of tracks in each reason we cross, this doesn't affect our turn of arrival. Armies must pay a full movement cost of a region over a single turn it entered it. Okay. About this, you can activate the train overlay by hitting the six key or by clicking on the boot. Where is the boot located? Pointed shoe, uh, Poulain button in the bottom right of the screen above of the minimap. Okay, there we go. Overlays offer a wealth of information. Utilize, utilizing them will generally assist you in your conquest or once you're done, click the end turn. Okay, so here and then here. Let's click the little booty. All right. This is weather overlay. And this is loyalty overlay. Three buildings overlay. Supply overlay. Not enough supply, okay. Well, that's good to know. Culture. Oh, good. What is this one? Uh, ownerships. Domain overlay. Oh. Well, that's kind of nice. I like that one. Can you have more than one? No, you cannot. Trade good overlay. Nationality and authority overlay. Political overlay. Religions. And last claims. Okay. This overlay is what? Uh, this is movement over. Really color coded according to the terrain. Number of movement points needed to enter a region. Stars besides the cost and no potential discount from a road. Right? Don't have any of that. Regions with two numbers are practicable both by troops and ships. Uh, practicality, a region cannot cost more than entire movement allowance of a stack. Okay, you like that one, it kind of tells us. The weather one's kind of cool too. That's the only one that shows, yeah. I like that one because you can see the forests and stuff, okay. All right, then we click the end turn button. Okay, we're stable, we know, and we are legacy. We don't want to be high because it gets us attacked. All right. Okay, while we're en route to the enemy territory of Tulia, let's discuss logistics. The saying goes, an army marches on its stomachs. Not literally, <laughs> unless there's this All right, then good joke. Which means your armies need to be well fed. To proceed, please select your army by clicking on it so that we can dive deeper into it uh, without its entrails. Okay, thank you. All right, let's click on our army. If you look to the left of the unit panel, below the general's portrait, you will see a selection for food consumption. 
This represents the total amount of food your unit consumes each turn with uh, mounted units consuming the most and frugal uh, skirmishers the least. Okay. Your units can draw food from friendly regions, either the one they're currently in or any adjacent ones. If you venture deep into enemy territory and into a reserve poor, devastated region without significant food, you rely on foraging or plundering, but only for a limited time. On that point, each unit will start losing one effectiveness point per turn, followed by one hit point until they eventually die. Well, we don't need that. Now, can we come down here and... All right, that doesn't tell us. These are early knights and sergeants, spearmen, Slingers. Okay. Your units, uh, okay, died. To recover whether you, from lack of supplies or combat lo losses, your units will need to be in a friendly region with adequate food. To regain hit points, the region must have a purple loyalty rating of 50 or higher. Please click on the region proper of the army's destination. Okay. All right. Tula is weakly defended. Only a hasty level local military militia uh, will form up in opposition to your army making their chances of survival quite low. This situation would be different if there were permanent military fortifications, like a hill keeper, even worse, a castle. And just a second, looks like my timer here, when I used to track how long we've been playing, has failed. So we'll just have to reset it here see if we can keep it running okay these structures have large garrisons and are capable of fending off medium-sized armies on their own additionally castles or similar fortifications are walled meaning you won't gain control of the region until the defenders either surrender after a siege or you decide to assault the walls as we'll see this could turn into a bloody affair if you don't wait for a breach before the imminent battle, though, will talk rapidly of the importance of religion and dynasty. Please click on the small mosque of Tula, the piety structure in the region panel. Okay. That's the small mosque. Okay. Let's move this over. There we go. Religion and kingdoms is, is virtually important or vitally important virtually, <laughs> as it was during the Middle Ages, impacting both local populations and global dynamics. Regionally, generating piety points increases population loyalty and diminishes the likelihood of heretics. These are similar to rebels, but with the ability to convert neighboring populations to their cause and will undermine your rule whenever they appear. Maintaining a balance between piety and stewardship increases the educational level of your populace, rewarding you with additional legacy points, the key to victory. What's more, population adhering to religions other than your national faith have greater unrest and reduced productivity and will be a liability till they convert. Well, I'll make them convert. Therefore, the conversion process, depending on piety points and clergy population count, is quite important. Yes. To understand the broader implications of religions, please click on the Religion Panel button located on the top bar immediately to the left of Leon Coat of Arms. Okay, this says missing a bonus of three piety, stone, tiles, and brick, silver. Structure. Millstone structure. This building has a pivotal role and will unlock several other buildings of importance. God's words, current 
gain piety per building the left conversion bonus 10 percent of current rate this building is a pivotal one it will unlock the second part of tier one piety buildings the mosque is the place of worship for muslim population is successor building to the uh Masla. its role is very important for any muslim community as this is where prayers are done and sermons are listened to tier one piety building can be upgraded to a mosque was upgraded from the mushla okay so we want to click on the religion panel button located in the top bar immediately left okay of this coat of arms okay that's all right let's move this over it says here tensions often arose between christians and muslims and conflicts or harassments aimed at pagans or jews were also common during this period nations of differing religions will over time experience progressively degraded relations unless they form a treaty to maintain mutual understandings in the absence of such treaties a holy war such as a crusade or jihad may occur these wars frequently targeted the conquest of one of the five holy cities rome yes this would be rome Constantinople, in here, Jerusalem, which is, could be here, yeah, I would say here, Mecca, or Medina, okay, uh, let's see, participation in a holy war benefits, offers benefits like extra authority gain automatic passage rights with particular participants but it can also entangle you in a costly and protracted conflict crusades in addition introduce specific elements such as new crusader factions which are intensely focused on their goals please now click on the nations panel button the top bar or hit end uh nations panel or dynasty panel and okay i just want to see what we have here most pious states leon what's this one rank seventh on piety six five Ranked third, ranked one, Papal States, Authority, plus ones. Okay, does that change? Doesn't appear to. And most uh, pious Muslims, uh, Vil, this place, he's third, ranks eighth. Okay. Muslims. Okay, so Seville is currently champion of the faith. Shia only. The Muslims with phenomenal require to the greatest population of piety. They can easily call a jihad. A significant pious Muslim nation can ask them to become oh Mujadid? Be a diplomatic interface, a bonus or penalty to their authority as well as any pious Muslim nation may apply if the holy sites of Islam are not under control of the believer. Click to focus on their capital. Papal states are the guarantor of the Christian faith. Any Christian nation having poor relations with it risks being ostracized or even excommunicated its authority also depends on the number of holy cities under control it also allows a good christian to join a crusade through the diplomatic interface lastly it cannot be vassalized except by the emperor of the holy roman empire with very high authority click to focus on its capital all right up here Okay, there we 
go. Paper states. Okay, it's not in this one, so Swilla. Alright. And if I hit N. Okay, there's Leon. Okay, the nation panel provides information about your ruler, including their age, health, and abilities. It also gives access to your realm's traits, which may be unique to your nation. For instance, Leon possesses the uh, Reconquesta perk, offering various advantages. Okay, let's see here. 16 Legacy. Special. Vassal, average money, metal. Trying to find out where it says that. Where is it? Reports. Let's see. Overview. Claims. Realm traits. Oh, there it is. Okay. Gain, uh, gaining a Muslim religion in Spain grants national authority contrary uh, to other nations. The Spanish Christian nation has a, specially built, a special building, the Furro, a settlement appearing on Spanish conquered lands. Also, the chance to get a decision to gain the support of knightly orders, uh, Iberian orders, and Templars specifically is increased. Okay. Okay. This is the, our abilities, decisions, ports. Go by King. We're clicking on the dust. Okay. Alright, alright. That's what we're working towards. And that's where we came from. Okay. Or could be progressing to aged to. Okay. And that should tell us all about him. Right. Well, we may be doing that in a minute. So. Is his lady, son, age 12, couple of daughters, relatives, nobles, health, royalty, okay. Wow, you could spend most of the time reading this stuff. <laughs> okay, now how do we get back? Okay, go back to here, I guess, Let's close that one, and then here, Legacy, oh, it shows the population, wow, Legacy points, Woo. details, unbelievable details, wow, it's, it is amazing. Close that. Let's go back to here. Authority in this order. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, we definitely have some some fun for this. Okay. Upon your ruler's death, uh, the heir inherits the crown. Uh, let me see. Your dynasty is critical to your success. I should probably start at the beginning. What do you think? Your ruler significantly influences your realm to the extent that sometimes it's better for them to have an accident. <laughs> the presence of a spouse or uh, court people is important in securing a strong heir. Upon your ruler's death, the 
the heir inherits the crown, but complications arise if they're too young or worse, if there is no heir. In such cases, a relative like a brother or uncle may step in or even a usurper, potentially sparking a civil war. This can severely impact the integrity of your, of your territory or your nation's overall authority. Okay. Additionally, such turmoil might wonder. Additionally, such turmoil might arise spontaneously if a character has low loyalty and decides to seize power, either through a coup or by commanding troops. Therefore, it is vital to monitor characters with low loyalty. While appointing characters to command armies and provinces is important, it is also uh, proposes a risk over time. Now, click to end turn. So let's look at authority. And we're let's see authority here. Where is loyalty? Overview, population, there's authority, legacy, factions, history, characters. What I really want to see is Let's see, it's claims. Let's go here. Okay, it's legacy points, but I still... Overall authority, I want to check. How do I check characters? Go characters. Okay, here we go. Loyalty. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. This guy has. Just go here. Okay, Leon. That's all my people who and who this guy at court. He's a Cortesian, and he has smooth lens. Excellent sister. Not so good with his noble. Good with his clergy uncle. Not sure, but excellent. Very good spouse. And... Here, okay, well. Look in here, interest. This guy's at court. Noble admin, pieties one, age 22. Okay. okay, I'm just looking to see. Where this guy is. Oh, he's down here. Hmm. Oh, well, can okay. move, move a little bit. So I just hit loyalty here. Health? Okay, they're all in good health. Loyalty. Unknown, 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 unknown. Okay, well, that's good to know. That's how you get to court. Unknown ability. Sixty-one, fifty-three. 
Oh yeah, it's actually where it goes down when they get better. And these are unknown. These are 100%. She's all, okay, good. All right, clicking to end the turn. All right. Close up this. And... And now we'll click the end of the turn. Hey! Looks like I did something jack of all trades. Chip off the old block. I guess I got some, uh, um, those things they give me in Steam, whatever they're called, escapes me right now. Okay. It says the battle is about to begin. Before uttering whatever that is, St. James and Strike for Spain. Please click on the region of Okay. The father of a new boy, uh, Cristobal. The nation is in jubilation. All right. All right. So if we go here. Oh, little tiny baby. Okay. At court, okay. Peer of the realm, okay. That tells us what we are here. At court, noble, not clergy. Oh, okay. Elf. All right, let's close that. Um, uh, close this, and we want to click here. Okay. It says, while the region panel of who selected, hover over the terrain icon. Uh, hover over the terrain, which is displayed as a brown rounded with a six inscribed on it. All right. Where might that be? Okay, we want to see the mountains. Okay, it says, well, let's hover over the terrain icon, which displays the brown, rounded, yeah, okay, it was a six inscribed on it, yes. The tooltip reveals several important features of it. First, it's mountainous, yes, it is. Which means it costs six movement points to enter unless there's a track, which would reduce the cost by two Second. A frontage of six. All right, where do I see that? I don't see a frontage. Of six is indicated. Frontage refers to the battle width. Only up to six units can engage each other in combat. Over the terrain icon. Right, where is the terrain icon? Looking at the terrain. Oh, frontage, okay. It's that one. Oh, with a six inscribed on. I got it now. Okay. So what's this one with a six inscribed? The front is just six is indicated. Yes. Okay. Therefore, a few army peasant units from Saragossa will face only six of units in the upcoming battle. Though there should be more than significant to defeat them. Last but not least, there is a defense rating of two. Okay, which means that each peasant will gain a plus two bonus to their defense in battle, which is significant. While it may not save them, consider how different the situation would be if they were heavily heavy spearmen instead. Ooh, yeah, that's true. With that said, let's not delay. Click 
to end turn so that we can proceed to the anticipated battle. Okay. Okay. When battle occurs during your turn, a panel appears with several options. Okay. The first option allows you to view the battle in detail by clicking on the view battle button. Okay. The second option lets you skip directly to the summary using the view report. Okay, there's the view of the battle. Another choice is to manually play the battle if you have fields of glory medieval using the export battle. That's what we're going to do. That's what we've been waiting for. For now, this feature only supports open field battle. Assaults on castles and sea battles are not available. Additionally, this option is limited to single player mode. Well, that's fine because we're a single player. Lastly, you can opt to skip the entire process and continue with turn progressing. The battle outcome will be displayed in the message log. Or you can click on the battle icon located in the region where the battle took place. For now, please click on view battle. Well, I don't want to click on view battle. I want to export the battle. So that's what we're going to do. Well, maybe because the tutorial will not allow us to do that. Wow, it's just too bad because that's what we were waiting for. Damn it. Okay. Well, view battle. Damn it. Battles take place on a grid resembling a checkerboard. Yes, that is true. Let's put that right there where the raw combat values of each unit is just one of the three factors to determine the outcome of each skirmish. These factors, combat value, leadership, and effectiveness, efficiency, each play a unique role in the duel as units face off in one-on-one -on -one melee combat. Each factor operates differently from the other two. In essence, poor leadership can't be offset by sheer combat power. Even a skilled general can only do so much to compensate for low, low unit efficiency. Ideally, you want to optimize all three variables, but that's easier said than done. This is the triangle rule. To follow the tutorial more easily, make sure the continuous play checkbox at the bottom is unchecked, okay? Then click on the large button featuring an arrow to advance to the ranged phase. Okay. In the ranged phase, all units from both sides fire at enemy lines. While ranged units can eliminate enemies, cannot eliminate enemies, they can significantly weaken them, reducing their chances of success in subsequent melee. Inexperienced range units tend to fire haphazardly, which is why you'll notice that some enemy units are targeted per the orange uh, radical by multiple units, while others are unscathed. Yes, that's true. Please click on the play button, and then once all shots have been fired, the slingers have returned to friendly ranks, click on it again. The tutorial will update when the first two melee units start their duel. Okay. Wow. That was loud. Uh, I don't know how to get to that. So sorry about that. It's going to be loud. I did not realize that FXX. Was that loud? Okay. All right. 
Let's click the play button, and once uh, all the shots have been fired, the singers return to friendly ranks. Click on it again. The tutorial maps will update. First two main units start to do it. Okay. Total rating, minimum roll, Leon. Okay. Yes, hits. Play. Okay. Consists of a series of duels between opposing units. Each unit rolls a number of dice equal to... Ah, move that over a little bit. Equal to one plus the efficiency of the commanding general. If present, so each unit rolls between one to three dice. Only the highest rolls are kept. All right. Additionally, each die is re-rolled until its value is at least equal to the sum of the unit's experience and effectiveness. This die value is then added to unit's combat value. If the unit is exhausted, meaning it has zero effectiveness, its combat value is halved. Uh, the combat value also receives a bonus from the unit's position behind it if it's a melee unit between one and three if it's a ranged unit. Finally, terrain defense and unit suitability for the current terrain will further modify the combat value. Click the play button at your convenience until this tutorial message updates. Okay. Right, range units. All right, I think they're dead. In some instances, flanking occurs. That's what we just had. This happens if one side has more troops or more cavalry than the other. In open terrain, cavalry units have special green squares reserved for them on the battlefield, making flanking maneuvers a frequent occurrence. Once all duels are completed, the game will determine if there is a winner. If so, a pursuit phase will ensure inflicting additional losses on the defeated side. Fast units and skirmishers are... Uh, practically effective in this phase, or particularly effective in this phase against the defeated troops. Take your time to observe the duels, clicking the play button at your convenience. Once you've seen enough, click the top right button to close the battle window and access the summary. Okay, once you have seen enough, click the top right button to close the battle window. Okay, oh, shoot, look at here. Well, all right, combat rating, killed them all, exhausted, all right, go next, all right, them, move that over, They're all dead. Right. Leon won the battle. Okay. Check. All right. Aftermath. This summary allows you to review the battlefield losses and the current state of surviving units. Units gain experience each time they fight, fight even if they don't kill anyone. However, levies gain experience so slow that it's often inefficient to maintain them during peacetime as they cost half their initial value to upkeep each turn. Standing armors units, SAUs, and mercenaries differ in that they gain experience quickly and become formidable forces in the battlefield once they reach veteran status. Winning the battle can grant your nation additional authority and more war score points, which are the currently used to negotiate peace terms. Some nations also receive extra perks from winning battles, such as additional gold or even slaves or the thralls for the Vikings. Once you close the summary panel, the turn will automatically resume processing all orders and interactions on the map. Let's see what we'll do on the next turn.
Look in here, slingers. Okay. All right. Summary path. Okay, the summary allows you. Okay, perfect. Okay. Well, I think we're going to call that an episode. Right now is a good time to stop. And we'll do a save. And we'll read this first and then we'll do a save. And then uh, next time we'll come back and see what happens with the rest of the tutorial. So what does it say here? It says, winning battles certainly helps win a war, but there may be times when it feels like time is against you or that war is more costly than anticipated. This could be due to your enemy gaining allies, rising war weariness, weakening your grip on your population, or a dwindling royal treasury as armies are more expensive to maintain when not stationed at home. To see what happened, to see what's happening in uh, Trulia, please close this window and click on the Trulia region. Okay. All right. Claimed. Owned. Available food. Minus two expected army food uses. 14 land cost. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and save. call this uh, um, yeah because we did that we did that one by mistake that's why we were having trouble getting the tutorial to start so let's go back here Okay, so anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, our slow move through so far through the uh, tutorials. We want to make sure that we, we, we get everything read. We take our time to truly understand what we're reading as opposed to just rushing through it and saying, yeah, that was it. Okay, move on and um, making our head spin. So we'll be back again in a couple of weeks with another episode. So leave a like, leave a comment. And as always, I'm Captain Jake, wishing you fair winds and following seas. Until next time.